Good morning everybody, this is Sangeeta Saxena, editor Aviation and Defense Universe and for once I'm not getting you live from anywhere friends. I'm getting you a speech given by CMD Max Aerospace, Mr. Bharat Malkani and uh, this was given at the MRO Asia Pacific in Singapore recently. Uh, friends, uh, it is here that he spoke about how India is a great MRO location and why everyone in the region should come to India to get the maintenance repair overall of their aircraft done. Uh, MRO uh, as an industry is growing and a very popular industry keeping in mind that we've got so many OEMs who started their MROs in India along with Indian partners. And uh, friends, let me tell you a little more about uh, the Max Aerospace. It's a one-stop solution provider and a trusted partner to its customers. And uh, it's been there since uh, 1994. And uh, friends, I'm getting you to uh, Mr. Bharat Malkani, uh, who is uh, going to speak here. And uh, you'll get to know everything from the horse's mouth. And uh, he here talks about the uh, Indian MRO space as well as Max Aerospace's company. So friends, it's back to Mr. Bharat Mankar. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see some of you here, some known faces, some new faces. Um, a little background on me. I represent Max Aerospace <coughs> Group from India. We're India's leading MRO uh, with global certifications. We were formed 30 years ago in July of 1994. And um, for those who may or may not know what is happening, perhaps the world's fastest growing market for MRO today is India. Um, the CAGR is estimated at 20%, and we estimate that this will sustain itself for another 10 years at least. Currently, in the civil fleet, India has close to 750 aircraft operating. And with the world becoming flatter, with the world having more and more aircraft available to every strata of society, I'm fairly confident this is going to be a global problem. Classic example, the largest manpower in the Middle East is people who leave Indian MROs, and I'm limiting myself to MROs. One has to merely walk into the MRO workshops of Qatar, Etihad, Emirates, Adat, and so on and so forth. You'll be surprised. And the reason for that is we are still producing. So if you look at this slide, here are some statistics for you. India produces about a million and a half graduate engineers a year. Now, admittedly, we are not saying only aircraft graduates. They could be from a civil engineer to an aeronautical engineer. Our industry, as we all know, encompasses requirements for pretty much all industries except perhaps civil and maybe even their hangers and workshops are covered. In addition, we do a million diploma. So you're looking at two and a half million people available annually, year on year, from top rated colleges. When I say top rated, if you see today the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, is Indian. You see Indira Nui of Pepsi, you see the Apple leadership team, you go to Jet Propulsion Lab, Zobleka, they're all from India. We're talking about some of the finest engineering brains to come out, are still being produced there, and that's the volume we're getting. Section 2 of the same thing, 2200 AME, AME is what we call aircraft maintenance engineer, or what the rest of the world calls technicians, approved mechanics and the sort. The gap is massive. The gap is massive because as a nation, we've had two challenges. One is, historically, we couldn't afford much. Transportation was covered by an extensive rail network and there was no opportunity for young boys and girls to go and join the aviation sector. Number two, we had very archaic rules. The import of MRO was taxed at 5% and local production at 
This particular thing changed only during COVID in 2020 that gave a boost to Indian MRO. And even more in 24, where the Indian MROs, whatever they produced, they could get a full set of from the users, that is the airline operators, the aircraft operators. So effectively, they went to 0% tax. India is now one of the few countries with zero import duties, export duties, or local taxes for MRO, making it a much favored location. But if you look at that again, 2,200 AMEs, number is low compared to that. One of the reasons I was asked to come and speak here was to give the opportunity. I don't know how many of you here are listening because you see an opportunity in education. But I promise you, it is bigger than the MRO industry itself. At a size of 2.8 billion, our MRO, the total production within country is 2.5 to 2.6 only. Until 2020, like I mentioned, from Independence 1947, the rules favored import of MRO. We were still governed by aircraft rules 1937 written by our colonial masters. That having been changed, the attitude changed, and you have a requirement, almost all the MROs outsourced. Between Lufthansa Technik, Air France Scalen, Turkish Technik, and SIAC, you've covered pretty much 100% of Indian MRO, plus some things that typically OEMs like to keep. All that is going to change in a country that's finding its feet, it's growing rapidly, and is able to establish its presence globally. So, 2,200 AMEs for the educational sector, you're going to have to look at at least training four to 5,000 additional per year. From these 2,200, how many are able to get jobs, or how many are competent enough to do the jobs, is a figure I don't have. And take an average guess, I would say half of them are employable easily. Half of them probably never make it to the industry because of the exacting standards that our industry desires. Rightfully so, we continue to be the safest form of transportation globally, no matter what the challenges we face. Be it the COVID, be it whatever else, we have continued to do this. So when you see this growth of Indian fleet, 713 as I mentioned to 1500 by 2031. Just do the math based on your own industry, whichever part of the world you might be. If you were to do an increase from 200 million to $4 billion of MRO, how many people do you think you need? And I'm not saying all of those are going to be done locally, no. I think a fair amount will still come through the import route. I think there will be some IP that some OEMs will continue to protect and we may not make it. But even if half of that makes it, we are woefully shot despite having engineers. And one of the other reasons for that is we've never managed to develop the brightest and the best colleges for AME, for aircraft maintenance. It is a new field. It's what you and I would call virgin territory greenfield programs. Um, I know there's an embry riddle in Singapore. I wish that they were here as well. I would have encouraged them to come and look at it very seriously. The Indian MRO industry, like I've said, uh, growth is at from 1.7 to 4 billion. The last figure that I have as 5% is not sure. I'm not sure it's even valid anymore. I don't think we can grow it at 5% when the CAGR of the MRO is at 9% the airlines at 20% because you will also have something else which I go back to. One of the advantages that India has and the ability to employ people is its low cost base. It's generally a low cost. It's not a, and, and by that low cost, you still get a pretty high value, which is why some companies, as an example, our company, Max Aerospace, we have a joint venture with Air France, Scaler, and we do a substantial amount of work here. And we thought we would be doing work only for the Indian market. Today, our single largest revenue comes from exports to Europe. Possible because a lot of the work that historically slash traditionally been done in Europe 
is now getting more and more expensive to do that. I think North America still is geographically far away and it is a challenge for us to support. Plus they have perhaps better manpower availability, and I say manpower without the term man, human uh, power, in, in Mexico, in, in uh, other parts of uh, South America. But India is a powerhouse. 1.5 billion people, ostensibly the world's fourth largest GDP or third largest, the, the numbers are small, growing towards number two rapidly, absorbing people, demographic dividend, average age of the country of people under 30 is 60%. So you've got a real demographic dividend. And while I'm not government of India, I'm here to give a few to those who are interested in understanding that perhaps the single largest growth in the MRO sector globally for investments is going to come in that country with solid returns but once again even if you don't if you decide not to invest in test equipment tooling it's investing in education if you have the kind of education capability singapore definitely has it i have seen it more than once is a is a real opportunity for you guys to come in uh, that was it what i was going to talk a little bit about one of the things I'd like to do is if there are any questions in the audience, I'd be happy to take it. I'd like to keep it crisp and short. I know there are other people that are going to be speaking later this afternoon, and I'd like to give them a chance to not be late because of me extending time. So, open to questions if anyone has or any interest. Uh, like I said, we are a private sector company, we are not government. I'm here in my capacity as an Indian, uh, trying to explain what are the opportunities in the country. On that note, I will say thank you, Sarah. Thank you to Aviation Week. Thank you to all of you for being here and listening.